that was easy. Hi, so there's this Veritasium video about how an infinite hotel ran out of room, and let's try to assess how accurate it actually is. So because it's such a popular video, I'm not going to actually show the video itself. What I'm rather going to do is I'm going to stop it periodically, say what happened, and assess uh, from there. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to move this to the right place so it's easier to see. All right, let's go ahead. So he's setting up this thing called the Hilbert Hotel, which is a room, uh, a hotel that has infinitely many rooms. And it's probably going to be something related to Turing machines because I've, I remember some, uh, I think a number file video maybe, but some video about um, trying to keep as many lights on as possible using some process, but we'll see what happens here. Um, it's, it's probably going to be something related to Turing machines or um, some computability aspect or something. Okay, so it, it actually might not be Turing machines, but it might be uh, related to um, some infinite, infinities are bigger than other ones. So maybe it'll be like uncountable versus countable. That's, that's probably what it is because his um, setup here is that there's, a, there's one person in every single room. Um, so, so therefore we have an infinite number of people in these infinite rooms. The reason, so, so this new person came into the hotel and is asking for a room and, but all the rooms are occupied. So that's a little bit troublesome in the actual X, the actual words that were used. It's fine in the sense of, um, having the rooms being occupied, but it's just, you have to say like all the rooms are occupied, but in order to have the people in the rooms, you had to have some kind of process to get them in there. And you, we typically, typically deal with only a finite uh, amount of time at, and then you only have a finite number of people in there. So the question is how did those infinite number of people get into the rooms in the first place? And I'm assuming, and the way that he set it up is that they're indexed by numbers. So like there's a number one room, there's a number two room, etc., which is fine. So each number I, each natural number I has a person in there. So that would be a more accurate explanation. Um, so there's nothing technically wrong. It's just the words weren't as precise as they could be. Okay, so what's going to happen here is that to make room, everyone gets shifted over a room. That'd be, I'd love to know that technology of like being able to address infinite amount of things at once. That must be some very, very fast wires, <laughs> faster than the speed of light. But um, anyway, so they're, uh, they're going to be pushed down and that's going to make, uh, make room. So what he's probably going to get into is some kind of bijection here. So if you don't know what that is, a bijection is basically you got two sets and you can associate one thing with one thing and the other one and there's nothing that's missed. So here, the numbers one and up can be bijectively mapped, uh, actually, no, sorry. The numbers from two going up can be bijectively mapped to the numbers one and going up just by subtracting one. Um, because, because if you take any number, that's going to map to exactly one number, and there's no number between one and infinity that, that's missed. So there's a bijection even though the one to in, going up has the one in the set, and the original set, which started with two going up, didn't have it. So even though they're not exactly the same set, there's a bijective mapping between them. Okay, so he, he, the setup here is... Um, if you have a finite number of people, you can just that are coming in this bus to go into the hotel. I love that it says no vacancy, but with the the no is not lit there. That's pretty funny. So uh, uh, you could just move the people over if you have a finite number, but here he's setting it up to where you have an infinite number, so you can't actually uh, do that. So let's see how where he goes. Okay, so yeah, that's what he's gonna do. So if you have an infinite number of people to add. It's actually important that this be a countable infinity versus an uncountable one. So um, I'm assuming that this is a countable infinity because one, there, <laughs> there can't be a listing of the people to go into the rooms if it's an uncountable infinity anyway, but um, there's only a countable number of rooms. So, um, and we only can have one person in each. So what he's gonna do, as he said, is to 
have everyone in the existing rooms move to the room that's twice the number that you currently are in. So like five goes to 10 and three goes to six, etc. And that will leave an infinite number of holes, so to speak. Um, and then that will, that will work. Yeah, so he said that each person on the bus can be given an, uh, an odd number of room. That's true if it's a countable infinity versus an uncountable one. And usually when you have these popular videos, unless you're talking about um, the counter diagonalization thing, you usually are going to be referencing countable infinity there um, because it, it's the one that we usually work with. Um, but uh, it, needs, it should be more precise here. All right, so, okay, so this is a setup. So one infinity is, is fine to shift the people over, but the problem is if he, he's probably gonna have an infinite number of buses, each of which has an infinite uh, thing. So then now we're going to have the diagonalization type argument where you have an uncountable infinity and that's just not possible. Uh, I see where he's going. Uh, I, I like that analogy. So he's bringing out a spreadsheet, which is going to serve as the basis for the diagonalization argument. Yep. Cool. Okay. So, so he's not quite there yet. So he's doing the standard diagonalization, um, uh, not diagonalization, but it's, a, it's the trick to list out every single person because you can't go through the entire first bus and then go to the second one. Whereas, whereas if you do this zigzag pattern, where you index the buses on one row and the actual seat number on the top on, on, as the columns, then if you do this zigzag trick, you're guaranteed to hit every single seat. So, and, and so therefore, um, for any particular person, you will address them at some point and, and that'll work. <laughs> A big bus pulls up. And so this is probably gonna be the uncountable infinity. So let's see. Uh, okay, so, so you said that each person is referenced by their name and they only have two letters, which didn't really make sense to me, but then now he's saying that their names are infinitely long. And so this is the infinite length representation that's gonna uh, uh, lead to the diagonalization argument, I'm gonna guess. He, he probably could have used better uh, letters than A and B. Um, maybe like using a particular symbol because people don't really identify to like a, A's and B's, but probably like, um, lollipops and sunshine or, or like a, a happy face and a frowny face or something so, something that's more uh, what people can actually understand versus um, a big long uh, string here and I, I like the, the construction of these the, the CGI aspect of this uh, I think that's pretty cool I'd like to know what software was used for that that's it's a nice illustration of like someone who actually works at a hotel I, I love it yeah, so, so this is the diagonalization argument um, of having someone who's guaranteed to be on the bus but is not assigned a room, supposing that there's assignments to rooms. One thing to note is this is fine for um, uh, most people, for the general public, but you can't actually assume who's assigned to what room because that would assume the particular ordering, but you're trying to prove that the ordering doesn't exist, which is impossible, right? Um, so uh, it's not actually precise here. It's fine for this, but it's not actually precise here. So you actually said countably infinite, that, that's good. I like that the no on no vacancy lit up when he said that there's just no room in the hotel anymore for uncountably many people. Oh, uh, okay. So, so, <laughs> so the he, he said that the in, the line of inquiry about finding these uncountable infinities and proving that they exist leads to the device in the world that we live in, which is technically true, but it's it's a little bit of a leap because the uncountable led to Turing machine understanding, which led to computation, which eventually led to a, a real computer, which decades later led to that so it's not direct but it's it's a nice line to put at the end I guess but all right yep so that's the end so um this is re relatively good I would like to have had a better precision on the actual diagonalization argument 
where you have all those A's and B's, but you can't assume the actual ordering. Um, you can't assume, like, this is the first room, this is the second room, this is the third room, and who's assigned to it. Because if you did, then you would know what the ordering is, but you are supposed to show that no ordering can actually exist. But um, it, it's fine enough for um, for a general audience video. So I would rate this probably like a, a solid B. It's mostly good except for that one bit, which is actually pretty crucial for the argument to work. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments about Veritasium's video into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.